Hey guys and gals, I'm doing this video as not only a demonstration for uh, multiple four ways in between three way switches, because I haven't seen many videos, if any, uh, showing multiple four ways in a switch system. And I'm also doing this video uh, to include as many tips and tricks of the trade to help you uh, facilitate your work. Uh, I'm trying to keep this as fast and precise as possible, uh, but also keep in mind <clears throat> you need to know to follow basic code compliances. Like in my example, I know the Romex needs to be uh, supported in the walls. I know uh, the boxes need to have at least two screws if, if, if you're going to use these type of boxes. I know my metal box for my light is too deep for drywall, but it's just a, an example holding the fixture. But if you do use a metal box, it does need to be grounded. Um, if you happen to use a plastic, a round plastic box, and this type of fixture anyway, that ground wire is just going to be hanging out inside that plastic box. So, like I said, know your basic code compliances. This is just for example. And you know you're not going to have all these switches close together. They're going to be spread apart around the walls. Um, for example, a large kitchen, kitchen, you might have multiple entrances. You could easily have four switches controlling the lights in the kitchen. Uh, my example, I did um, four, say like a light or multiple lights on the back porch. So uh, three-way switch I labeled as the kitchen uh, going out to the back porch um, and two boxes in the living room. Maybe uh, you have a couple different uh type of doors, French doors, sliding glass doors going out to the back porch. So you have one on one side, one on the other, and say maybe a, a, the fourth one in the bedroom going out to the uh, back porch also. So just to uh, follow my wiring here, I'm using uh, 14 gauge wire. I like to use 14 gauge slash 15 amp circuits on my lighting circuits and 20 amp uh, number 12 gauge wire on my outlets unless otherwise stated in the plans if you have a set of plans definitely follow those an inspector is going to follow those so I theoretically have a 12 2 wire coming in from my breaker and it's going to my first box I have it labeled on the stud the line coming in my first three-way at the bedroom side so you see down there it is 12 it's 14 2 Romex, black, white, and ground, bare ground coming in there, and the whites are the neutrals spliced in every switch box. That is new code now. You need to have a neutral spliced in every box. I'm going to get to this one in a minute. Leaving the box are my travelers on the gold terminals of the three-way switch. The black terminal on the three-way is power coming in. What you always want to remember about three-way switches is one switch is going to have power, the other last switch is going to be the switch leg going out to the light. You're never going to have both at the same time. You're never going to have power on one, power on the other. You're never going to have a switch leg on one, switch leg on the other. It's always going to be power, switch leg, or power switch leg, just depending on which box where power comes in first, where the switch leg goes out. You'll also notice I am using, you can get a good shot here, crimp sleeves for my grounds. I like using these because I'm all about good connections. I have opened up many boxes in my time finding uh, loose connections and it's usually in a wire nut sometimes on the screws either way I like to use good connections and these are 18 gauge to 10 gauge crimp sleeves and I'll show you another uh, example here when we get to this box what I did a little different with that crimp sleeve so getting back to the system here I got the two three ways leaving the box and 14 3 Romex you can see the black white red and bare ground those are tr those are traveling <laughs> those are carrying the travelers and the neutral through every box 
So follow the 14-3 over to the first four-way box. I have them separated here. Here's the first pair of travelers going to the what's labeled the input terminals, which are the black terminals. And the travelers leaving the box on another 14-3 in the next four-way are on the output terminals, gold terminals. So I'm going to wire up this one to give you a good example of what things you can do and things you shouldn't do. And the 14-3 the, uh, continues through there, comes over to the three-way here. And the travelers actually end at this three-way. You can see the 14-3 entering the box. Black, red, white, and bare ground. And the two travelers go into the gold terminals on this three-way. So like I said, I'm, I have most of these wired up just, just to try to keep the... Uh, just try to keep the video fast, give you some pointers along the way. And again, black terminal, the switch leg going out to the light. I like to call them black terminals, by the way, even though on the switches they are called, they are labeled uh, common. I believe it's on the back on this one. You can barely see it, it's common. I myself just don't like calling them common terminals because uh, many uh, wiring diagrams you run into, uh, especially for ballasts, the common is re is referring to the neutrals, the neutral splices in the system. So, just things to keep in mind. Uh, something else to keep in mind about a three-way. This switch looks exactly, they look exactly the same, except of course this one's a little older. The black terminal on the older one is on the right. The black terminal on the new one is on the left. Just things to keep in mind because they're not always in the same place. So, I had a, a plastic in here just to uh, cover up my wires. Because when you're in the rough-in stage, uh, roughing in a house, uh, you get your wires in the box ready and then you leave. You got drywall guys coming in, sometimes painters. There's going to be, when you come back, there's going to be drywall around this. You may have mud inside your box. You may have paint overspray over your wires. So just grab anything. Grab paper towels. Uh, grab uh, cardboard. Stuff it in there. I use the plastic off of the Romex. I also I got my wires ready, as you can see. <clears throat> I got my two sets of travelers in here. neutrals already tied and I got my ground spliced so to show you that example I did in here sometimes on an older system sometimes those grounds are cut short too short and you have, may have to add a pigtail these crimps are great for that too I put it in there almost like a splice in a wire nut and I was still able to crimp them down just add on a little pigtail. Something else I already I did to these wires too, I wanted to point out to you really close. Not only did I do the wire loops on them, but you could see I did a little tiny kick down. You can even manipulate these wires because they're 14-3. You can manipulate them, manipulate them with your fingers. Just put a tiny little kick down and that helps you wrap those screws, wrap those wires around those screws Nice and tight, nice and fast. I've heard, I've read many instances where guys are wiring up hundreds, possibly thousands of switches and outlets in like a high-rise building, and they want to backstab those wires. They want to get done as fast as possible, and they don't care what it looks like when they leave. They don't care what happens when they leave. I care what happens when I leave. So... Please do not backstab. The good part about these four-way switches, you can't backstab these types, at least this brand. You have to wrap them around the screws. The three-ways, anyway, you can. Get a close-up on that, you can see the holes on top. Backstabbing deserves an entire separate video. I, along with many other electricians, believe 
Backstabbing is a very, very poor connection. Causes fires. Causes so many problems. It should be outlawed. It shouldn't even be manufactured anymore. But again, like I said, that could be an entire separate video. Uh, to show you my labeling, take, a, take two, three seconds to actually label your wires. It's quite possible the customer may want to uh, trim out, which means uh, you know put in all the switches and outlets and covers. Say you might be on vacation. You could be on your day off. And another guy from the company is going to come out and wire these up. So just label as much as possible. I have my I have my labels on there. I took some Romex that was already cut off of these wires, sleeved them back on, and wrote in and out on both sides of the wires. Because like I said, you don't know what's going to be covered. You know you don't know if it's going to be painted. <clears throat> so I have them labeled you can either say in or out you could say set one set two it doesn't matter because even though the four-way says input and output you're going to have one set on the gold screws one set on the black screws it doesn't matter input or output it doesn't matter if it's power you know these travelers are coming from the power side it it doesn't matter which screws you go on it just has to be one set on the gold one set on the black i'm going to wire that on wire that one up for you right now so i will mount my phone up here and I'm gonna zoom in get a good shot of this box <clears throat> and we always like to go ground first and you'll see with these kick downs it goes right around those screws And you want to put those around the screws clockwise because those screws are going to tighten those wires up. You put them on counterclockwise, they're going to open up under those screws. So to show you the example, even though I have the wires labeled out, I'm going to put them on the input side just to show you it still works. So I'm going to put this set on the black terminals that are actually labeled input on the switch. And I'm gonna put my input wires on what's labeled the output on the gold screws. And I'm also showing you, I'm doing red on this side, black on this side, because again, that doesn't matter. It will still work. And you see how fast I'm getting these wires on the screws. It's really that not that much slower than backstabbing. Even though I can't backstab this switch, there's many others that you can. So I'm going to go ahead and get these wires in the box here. Something else to keep in mind, what I like to do is I label the top of the switches so I know which way is up. There's an arrow here, arrow here showing up. And it just keeps everything uniform. When I'm uh, stuffing these wires into a box, I like to keep an eye on where the ground is going. I don't want that ground to come up and touch, accidentally touch one of these terminals, get some nice arcs and sparks going on. So I'm just going to temporarily get these wires in the box just for, again, speed. You don't need to be watching me tighten down all of these screws. So they're just down for safety. I'm going to get the light in the box with some loose screws here. And speaking of loose connections, I wanted to show you this too. I kept this out on purpose to show you. Please don't use these push-in connectors. They are very loose. You can see 
how easy it moves and all I have to do is wiggle 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 and that's how easy they come apart it's the same as backstabbing twist those wires together use wire nuts wrap those rise around the screws my mantra do it right the first time I'm pretty proud of uh, many jobs where I've had to go back to they were not my fault it was either faulty equipment um, GFCI's not working stuff like that it had nothing to do with workmanship <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, plug in which you'll actually be terminating to a breaker but I am uh, just temporarily plugging in terminating to a breaker so there we go my light is on and as you can see it doesn't matter which switch you go to lights always coming on and off you're in the kitchen you want the light on turn it on you go to the bedroom off turn it off so that is just about everything I wanted to show you um, another quick point or two is uh, speaking about power just like I did you never want to turn on you never want to terminate your line wire in that panel until you are ready to energize because think about it, if you're on a job you don't know who's at the panel you don't know who's going to be flipping on and off breakers while you're while you're not there so you don't want any uh, unnecessary arcing and sparking so if you are working on a uh, older system I got another point about an older system too if you're working on an older system you want to make sure no one has access to that breaker with the lockout tag out system you especially don't want anyone turning that on while you're working on the wires uh, the second thing to keep in mind about an older system the white wires in the boxes don't always mean it's a neutral that is new code I think around 2004 I'm not sure um, older houses many times use two wire Romex as the travelers so you're gonna have a black and white as travelers so it's quite possible you might get to a customer's house where they have the switch already out of the box, the wire sticking out, and you don't exactly know what's what. Usually it goes in the same Romex. Usually the travelers are in the same Romex, but it could quite possibly be a black and white that are the travelers. Um, I think that's about it. I'm just checking my notes. Um, I think that's all. So I hope it all. I hope it helps. I hope it makes your jobs faster, safer, and uh, do it right the first time. Thanks.